Hey guys, welcome back to Ultrapreneurs Talk and Tea episode 4. So, we're already into the fourth one already. I'm super ill, guys, so you're going to have to bear with me in this episode. Do not forget to thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to our content if you're looking to become a better trader or if you're already trading and you want to see another side of an insight into the markets. <coughs> So you're gonna have to bear with me. Um, I'm here today with Adrian, also my dad. So we'll be talking a little bit more about his background and how he got into the mindset uh, side of the field and how that ended up with Samuel and co-trading. Um, so those guys will obviously live on our exclusive content uh, to our members down here as well and obviously going up to the rest of YouTube later on. So. Uh, thank you for joining us on uh, the My episode. Pleasure. My pleasure. Um, Hi guys. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're on this camera, this camera, and also this camera. So, um, first things first, I just want to uh, ask you, can you just confirm that um, obviously the whole of Samuel K Trading was clearly started by all of your piles of wealth of money, and then you passed that on to me with a small loan of £1 million, isn't that right? Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> so no, just two million pounds. No, it's not a single penny. The only thing that we paid for was your your training that you did to start you down the road. For, yeah. And that was when I was a lot younger, ten years ago, nearly now. Yeah. A lot younger. Yes. Yeah. So uh, and I was a lot less greyer. A lot less greyer and a lot younger. So that was clears a whole lot up there for you guys. So for those uh, haters out there, you just got told again. Um, so. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't as lucky as Donald Trump to uh, get a, a small load of £1 million as much as I would like one. Um, so let's just pretty much, let's get everyone out there to know you and uh, more about you. I don't, obviously, everyone knows you in general through the journey, but can you give them a little bit of a, a background of, you know, how did you get involved into the mindset side of things <laughs> and where did your experience stem from and, you know, give us a bit of a background about yourself. Well, wow. mindset. Well, the mindset was a later stage. It started 40 years ago. I, I studied massage and reflexology while I was studying that. The, and that was privately, that was at, uh, at Hartenden. Um, yeah. And the lady there was also into color therapy. She was into homeopathy. Color therapy? Color therapy, yeah, colors. To, to can change your mood, can change okay, your physiology. Fine, yeah. uh, there's a lot of research into that to help people. Um, but but colours also affect people in certain ways. Um, so there was colour therapy, there was biochemistry, homeopathy and batch flower remedies, a lot of which you don't hear of these days. Homeopathy is probably prevalent these days still. Um, once I'd done that, um, I set up a practice at home doing massage. And by the way, guys, 40 years ago, men weren't supposed to be massaging, all right? <laughs> massaging was done. They never had any clinics like you do today. It's like multi-gyms are all over the place. We never had them when, when I was Sam's age. What they had was a, a hairdresser's, and if you want a massage, you go in the back room, so to think. So it was, a, it was a little bit seedy when I was doing it, but I was good, I was good. So I ran a practice from home. What, uh, a seedy practice? Or? No, no, I ran a proper <laughs> practice from home, and uh, which was very good actually. Um, but I decided to go full time, and so I advertised, very carefully worded, downfall. I used to get phone calls at three o'clock in the morning. Oh. Thought, what do you do? A massage? What else? And that was it. After that, a few months of that, I pulled the advert and I stopped doing that. So. From there, um, because I've done martial arts for years, I was interested in the energy system of the body, yeah. how the meridians work and how the mind affects the body. And one, one of the guys came to my club and I knew his name, his, uh, his, the name was Van Wienen, which doesn't mean anything to most people, but he is um, Shotokan Karate's highest instructor in this country. Okay. He's got something like a thousand students, but the point, and this is where I don't call coincidence coincidences. He said to me, he said, "Oh, you're interested in all this mindset stuff, aren't you?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "My brother's a hypnotherapist, right?" And he's putting on the last course this weekend, 
after four years, this is the last one. So I phoned him up and there was one place left. That's good salesmanship there, isn't it? Coincidence. <laughs> and I got into the hotel where there was one room left and I spent two days with him, got totally blown away with it. And I thought, this is for me, this is what I want. So I looked in the paper on the Monday morning and lo and behold, the last enrollment for a course in London was on the Thursday. So I phoned up, there was one place left and I thought, and it was, the introduction was something like 800, 800 pounds, something like, I thought, that's a lot of money. So anyway, I thought, how do I get that 800 pounds when I didn't have anything? So I looked through my insurance policies and I found one insurance policy that was doing nothing. So I phoned him up and said, how much is this worth now? And he said, 825 pounds. Uh -huh. Coincidence that it was just enough to pay for the course. And once I'd done the course, that was me. Um, I trained as a hypnotherapist uh, up into London, hypnosis and psychotherapy. And that's where I got into the mindset stuff. And that was late in the late 90s. And just around that time, there were a lot of energy therapies coming out. Roger Callahan came out with a TFT thought field therapy, which was really big, which was based on tapping certain acupuncture points yeah. while focusing on, the, on, on negative emotional issues. And he used to train, going back to the 80s, his courses then were a hundred thousand pounds. What? If you didn't have a hundred thousand pounds, you didn't get on his course, and he was sold out. So how many seats did he have? One. Oh no, he had lots of seats, lots of seats. He was <laughs> very big. But from that stemmed uh, something called EFT, yeah, emotional freedom technique yeah. by Gary Craig. And again, that's so powerful now. It's used by psychotherapists, hypnotherapists, it's by doctors clinical practitioners all over the world it's huge which is great but you know it's a little bit obscure when you're walking on the train going to work in the morning starting tapping yourself you you find out how many people don't like what you're doing you know so yeah, yeah. it's a little bit obscure so those were the energy therapies and tapas acupressure technique uh the mudra pad allergy elimination technique were others so there's a whole slew of yeah, them yeah yeah but i basically got into hypnosis and that's where I, I i started to really look into the mindset and how it affected people and i was very good i was very good yeah. at doing that and you uh you ended up i remember you said so you used to lecture a little bit as well about it didn't you about the mindset side of things i used to lecture at um, king's college in london for the um, ICH Institute of Clinical Hypnosis. I used to run their tapping course. I, I put on a whole okay. course there and a lot of mindset stuff. I also learned the most powerful, deepest um, hypnosis technique called Ultra Depth, which takes you yeah. down really, really deep. So that was cool, yeah, but that's where I got into it all. So you obviously you, you went through, you did all that, and that's you're talking, that was a quick summary of 40 odd years, wasn't it? Just about, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then what, where was the deciding point that we thought that you could move into trading and help with traders? Well, that that came about because of what you did to to do your trading, and I noticed you getting all stressed and uh, ang anxiety ridden at the beginning, and everything wasn't working. But I was also doing private work with clients all over the country, and it was at that time when you put your first course on. Yeah, and would you say that, uh, so obviously in every kind of ultraverse talking to you, we try to get five tips on how to be a better <coughs> trader. And obviously we think that would be better in a mindset uh, way from you. We don't want them all now, but uh, what would you say has been the most common mindset problem that you have come across from all of the traders and all of the students that you've met? Because I think that would be really valuable for these guys sat back at home just to know what is the most common mindset issue that they've come across that's hard to put that into a nutshell common is is getting out of trades too early is a very common one for a lot of the novice traders that come through okay to get rid of the anxiety not walking away from a trade and letting it run they get fixated with actually sitting there and watching it then they get stressed because it's going in the opposite direction yeah. and, and then the stress comes in and the, those are two of the biggest ones. Do you, do you think that trading 
could be classed as an addiction. Yes. You For do. some people, they can get addicted to it. They get a high from it. They, it's as if they're challenging the market. Yeah. That they've got to be right, that they can predict the market. Uh, and that's a big failing, you can't. So anxious, being anxious and leaving trades too early yeah. is one of the most common things. One we're... of the common, one of the other common things is when they first start trading, they put their stop loss too tight. They don't allow the market to breathe when it opens. They put on a buy position, stop loss is too tight. It takes them out of the trade and then it goes in exactly the direction they wanted. And that's very common, very common. And do you find that that's easily fixable? No, you can get rid of that. They, that's, that comes with time, but also the techniques to get rid of that anxiety, that need to sort of make money as well. Yeah. Do you feel that uh, kind of obviously everyone here in this company probably looks at you quite like a, a I'd say a father figure in themselves. I'd say quite a lot of people I would say probably look at you like a father figure in the company and. Uh, someone that they go to to talk to mm. um, do you feel that's part and parcel of trading that you need to open up and talk to someone about how you're doing in the markets <coughs> and stuff like that and do you think that's beneficial sure absolutely people tend to especially guys tend to blokes they tend to bottle it up they hold their emotions inside and that eats away at them they have this internal dialogue this mental chatter that goes on and they don't voice it it just comes out in their head and that starts to go round and round and round and round and round and they they get really upset and negative and then to the point where they just walk away or they explode okay and so when you say walk away they just quit yeah they literally walk out without telling anybody and uh, because they're embarrassed you know the, the shame of, of losing and all of that uh, persona that perception um, is against them, you know, that they haven't stepped up to the plate and made it, they're not successful. Yeah. They just need more time and they need to work on the psychology side of it, but they will do it, everybody can do it. Yeah. So those people that talk to you, and those people that talk more, do you think that they've developed more as a person and as a trader th since? Yeah, because when we start doing work, we find out there's a lot of emotional stuff coming from home, from their background, from their personal life, and when we change that, that has a knock-on effect with their trading. Yeah, yeah. No, that's one that I was. I always believe is if you start off like, uh, for example, I'm having a bad day anyway because I'm not well as as it is, you know. Um, and then I get up, I, I get ready to go. The dog jumps up at me, gets his muddy paws on me. Bad day gets worse. I get in my car, and I've got a flat tire. My day gets worse. I get, I, I, I got to go fill the car up and all the rest of it. But it's just one of those things where some days it just doesn't align sure. with what you're doing. <coughs> On those days, what's your advice to traders? Because I know that there's people out there that are listening, watching, that have all have a bad day, but they still want to get on a trade. What's your advice for those people that are just having that knock-on effect? You know, you just have that one bad day every now and then. You need to settle down and and reset the mind. So. One of the techniques on the course is the silence of the mind technique, which stops the brain from thinking. Okay. And that just allows the amygdala, the fight or flight, uh, to reset. And then you start to chill and you start to relax and you get in control of your emotions. Instead of putting them all in one basket, just let everything melt away. Yeah. And it can only take five minutes, you know, max, really, okay. to do that. And so, what you could, so you could go from having that really bad day to then having a positive mindset and just. Sure. Yeah. It's the internal dialogue that starts dictating how bad your day is, that little inner voice. And we have between 50 and 65,000 of those a day. So yeah. if they're all negative, then your life's crap. But if you start turning that around into positive, then it changes it. But when you do silence the mind, it stops that inner voice. And so you don't have any language going on between your ears and you can actually reset and chill down. So for so one tip, uh, your, your first tip is pretty much, well, I don't think we have got a tip yet, have we? We said about not being anxious. Uh, well, not putting your stop loss <coughs> too tight yeah. is one, and that's uh, letting your trade pan out. Yeah. So let's try to get five mindset tips, because obviously trading, we get trade tips, but what would you say your number one tip would be for the mindset of trading? 
one thing that what? these guys could take away and put towards their trading plan? From a mindset point of view or from a trader's point of view? From, their, from a trader's mindset point of view. Well, you need to prepare for the day. So when you come in, make sure you get in before the market opens. A lot of people who come into trade come in late and they've missed some of the biggest moves. So get in early, check what Asia did overnight, start seeing what's happening around the world to see if you can affect it. If you do that, that could affect the London Open. So from there, start checking your currency pairs, check for any news that's going to come out that could influence the outcome of a trade and start prepping yourself in that respect. So we say mindset tip number one is just be prepared basically for your day. Yeah. And I have a schedule so it's summary for tip one, would you say that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so what's let's let's go let's find some other things then. So you've obviously like I said you work with a lot of traders on helping their mindset issues and getting them to the next stage. What's probably one of the biggest issues or biggest turnarounds that you've seen? Let's obviously not use any names for anyone, but what's I'd say a biggest issue where you've seen a trader struggling and then you've worked with them on their mindset and then they've gone to perform even further. What would be a good example of that case? There was one guy I worked with who his trades were appalling and he wasn't making profitable trades at all. Okay. Um, so I did a, a whole brain balance, I rewired his brain. Well, there's something I do that's extra that I don't necessarily do in the class. If I muscle test them and I do kinesiology to, to muscle test yeah. and their arm goes down, it weakens. They're weak to money, the thought of money, no matter what they do. I also test for an entrepreneur and being the best trader they can be. I reset that, I rewire the brain and that's done in a matter of five, ten minutes maximum. What I did with him and once I'd rebalanced him, <coughs> The following week, he was 5% up, okay. whereas before he'd never been up at all on his trades. So in one week he'd made 5% from failing all the rest of the time. This is an interesting case. Yeah. So interesting case there with uh, that guy, so he went from not being profitable to they've been up 5%. <coughs> Now we hear a lot of figures getting thrown around that mindset is the biggest aspect towards trading. Now I'm a strong believer of that just because of the time that I've spent in the markets. I understand the ups and the downs and what's going on and all the rest of it. But why do you think it's the mindset that's the biggest issue over say technicals and fundamentals and understanding your market? It's the way the brain works. It's all part and parcel of it. <clears throat> the way the brain works. It creates programs. Trading is just another program with an emotional content. You need to control the emotions, otherwise they will take over and they will trigger the amygdala, which is the fight or flight. And when that is triggered, it takes over your prefrontal cortex, your, where you make your executive decisions, and you start making stupid mistakes yeah. because you can't think properly. 95 to 98% of your day is run by programming and if your program is is not on point there is some failing with it that's the result you're going to get so you have to change the programming to get a better quality of trader yeah okay let's go for tip number two then for mindset what would be the a, a big tip on how to have the best mindset towards trading you have to be mindful of your thoughts Okay. There's something I use, um, affirmations, and we know what an affirmation is, something yeah. you repeat over and over and over again. That's a direct challenge to the subconscious. But if you use an affirmation, which is a, a, a statement that you'd say as, why am I, you'd, you'd make the statement as a question. So why am I so confident? Or, or uh, why are my trades so consistently good? It's not a negative and it, it changes the way the brain works in the fact that you focus on a positive. Remember, you have 60, uh, 50 to 65,000 of these internal yeah. dialogues. So if you're changing the internal language into a positive form, then you start to 
reset your brain into the positive approach, the positive aspect, as opposed to focusing on negatives all the time. Okay. So, you, in short, you're basically saying focus on positives. Yeah, focus on the positive. For every uh, every negative, you need two, two to three positives to counteract that negative. Okay. So if you're having more negatives in your day, you're going down. You have to change your mind so you, you focus on the positive. So in th one of the previous episodes I had an uh, interview with Gajinda, who's uh, a very good trader mm. and travels quite a lot now, but he, he was saying about how he uh, has a goals list. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's, <coughs> it's for your mindset as a trader having a goals list or something along that? What's your kind of experience with creating goals lists and stuff absolutely, like that? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we know from the law of attraction that what you focus on you attract the law of resonance. So if you start focusing on these things, they start coming into your world. Do you, you like do you believe in the law of attraction? I do to a degree. Uh, I, I believe the, the law of resonance. So what frequency you put out in a thought, you attract that frequency. Okay. But in the secret, they didn't give you all the information. They said that what you focus on, you attract. You do, but if you focus on a million pounds sat right here, you can sit here for the rest of your life and it won't drop through the ceiling. Yeah. You have to take steps in order to bring that into your, into your world. Yeah. So I do believe in the law of attraction and the more you focus on it, it's all to do with energy. It's, everything is energy. It's like picking up a phone, you think of somebody, the phone rings, you pick it up, you go, <laughs> I was just thinking about you and you say yeah, it's a coincidence. Yeah. Have you ever tried to park outside a set of shops when it's pouring down with rain and you think I'm never going to get that space and all of a sudden somebody pulls out in front of you, you go, oh, <laughs> that was a stroke yeah, of luck. Yeah. So it's little things like that but if you focus on though the positives you start to attract them. Start off little and then build up to that. No, I, I, I'm a strong believer of, of that as well. It, I'm a strong believer of the law of attraction but the fact that you have to work tirelessly to get there sure. as well. So, for example, if I was focusing on, uh, you know, when, well, when I started making X amount of money, then I would have to build a plan about how I could make X amount of money yeah. and then work on it and then think about it continuously all the yeah. time. I think the the best example of that, of, of the law of attraction, if for those people that wanted to know a little bit more about it, would be having a look at Jim Carrey mm -hmm. and, and what he did uh, with his career and how he used the law of attraction or what he believes is the law of attraction to get where he wanted to get. Uh, and the same again with Will Smith. Uh, Will Smith always used to say, "If you could get on, a, uh, if we both get on a treadmill together, either uh, you're getting off first, or I'm going to die trying." Yeah. Uh, as in, like, I've got to give my all to achieve this. Uh, and you know, it's not about you know brick walls, for example. When you build a brick wall, you don't sit there and go, "I'm going to build a brick wall." You sit there and go, "I'm going to lay this brick here today, and then I'm going to lay this brick here." And you build up your building blocks of how eventually you get your your big wall of what sure. you're after. And so I, I think for me that was a massive uh, a turning point of belief in my in my game of trading, of understanding that actually if you put out there what you want, the opportunities are there. It's just whether or not you take them with the action. So I think it's always to do with uh, action, action, action. Yeah. But if you put it out there, the opportunities <coughs> to take the action are there. So, for example, if I said, uh, you know, I really want to do a skydive, I really want to do a skydive, I really want to do a skydive, and I thought about it for, you know, months and months and months, because someone comes up to me and goes, oh, I'm thinking of doing a, a charity skydive, do you want to join me? That's the opportunity, the action is me then sure. taking it to do sure. so. Or you might go to an airfield and watch people sky jump, and yeah. then all of a sudden there's a free offer for you to, you have yeah. to start making steps. It's like having a black forest gateau cake it's this big that thick the yeah. idea of eating it is great halfway through you feel sick yeah if you're if what you want to attract into your life is too big your subconscious will sabotage you but if you cut that cake up into slices you can break down that whole cake and you'll eventually eat it so if you want to be a multi-millionaire great but if it's too big here yeah. in your subconscious it will shut you off. It's too big. It can't handle it. 
it's like the cake it'll make you sick but if you break it down into steps what you need to do on a weekly monthly yearly basis to get there it's then doable yeah I mean, we I had an experience obviously that you, you know about these guys don't know about that when uh, I got to the point where I was trading about half a million pounds and I couldn't get past it mm -hmm. and so I, I kept going 495 505 Four nine five, <coughs> yeah. and all it was was a mental block that said that my net value was half a million pounds, yeah. and that's why I couldn't get past that figure. Sure, and so it just stuck there, didn't it? And when we broke it down, eventually got past it and progressed. Yeah. Why do you think that people, including myself, you know, I don't now, but I may do. I don't know. We haven't done it in a while, but I haven't had any walls that I've hit monetary value. What do you think? Why do you think people set a cap on their value in life? You know, because clearly mine said that you're not worth more than half a million pounds. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm working so hard to achieve all of this X, Y, and Z, obviously we fixed that now, and I'm worth a lot more. But why was that there? And what could people do to remove that wall? Hmm. Well, that's a common trait with people that come through the course. It's usually about, and you don't find this in the books, it's something I found out as a hypnotherapist. Your, where you're born, your social family, the structure of your life, where you live, the people around you that influence you when you're growing up, feed into you and create the program. You can look at it, if you look at the country generally, there's a north-south divide. It's poorer in the north, it's richer in the south. You can have London, you can have, it's only 20 miles diameter, you can have Kensington and Chelsea where it's a rich affluent area, you can have the East Walthamstow which is seen to be less, there's more crime, there's more violence, there's less jobs, so in your head life is difficult, life is easy, north-south divide, so if your parents didn't have any money then you're not rich, and so you get so, well we can't afford to go on holiday, uh, we can't afford to go to that restaurant so therefore we're not rich we're poor and so in your mind you start to create the belief as how much you can eat uh, how much you can earn yeah. in life based on usually five people around you and that includes your parents if they don't if they're not multi-millionaires or rich and have good jobs then if you were to seem to earn more than them you would be sort of sort of getting out of place yeah. in society so usually um, it's it comes from the area that you're born in. Not always. Uh, some people still step up and, 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 and change their life, even though they've come from a really poor background. It's not everyone, but it is very common. So the next question is then, I understand <coughs> that. So it's all based on your experiences of your program when you built up as a kid, or, you know, that you can't afford that, you want to save for a rainy day, all of that kind of thing. So how do you buck the trend then? again mindset you've got to start focusing on the positive you've got to work out what you want to earn I, c I talk about a vision board yes. creating a vision board for the future if you want a big house cut it out from a magazine yes. at the car you want if you want to put a certain amount of money that you want to be able to earn from either a job or trading write it down and focus on it every single day keep focusing on it law of attraction will start making things happen for yes. you Tip three, guys, I want you to create a vision board, okay? Now, on that vision board, I want you to put everything that you desire in life, starting from the left, the smaller goals of what you feel are more achievable, and then on the right-hand side, moving up to the bigger goals. And then just send me a picture on Instagram of your vision board. I'd love to see what you guys are visualizing and, um, you know, what you're doing. <laughs> uh, it'd be awesome to see it. I'm laughing because I remember someone, I saw someone's vision board that had Hermione Granger on, uh, which was a bit, of, a, bit, a bit of a weird <laughs> one. But, um, yeah, on your vision board, guys, <coughs> if you could put on there, you know, your goals from left to right. I think that's uh, it's something that I did as well uh, yeah. throughout my career of where I've been. It would also be interesting to actually have a look back at my vision board now see to see, see what I've achieved because I think I've probably achieved quite a lot of them. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know what I've done with it, but once you get into the routine though of the successful mindset, it kind of just flows, yeah. and you kind of start questioning. I think that's probably one of the biggest parts of uh, being successful is question the kind of normality 
you know, it sounds weird, but let's say the simple thing, obviously, you know, I've, we're in the office now, the tea is, is over there, right, it's, it's over down the other side of the corridor, most people would just walk in a straight line and go towards the tea room, but just question the simple thing, why did they go that way, and why did they go right? So a perfect example would be on the floor one below us, the tea room is sometimes in the first thing in the morning it's completely packed to get a cup of tea. Whereas if you just pick a mug out of the cupboard and walk to the other side, there's another coffee machine where there'll be no queue. Yeah. And it's just that simple thought process of just thinking a little bit more <coughs> about how can I get what I want, but quicker, sure. without doing anything wrong, all, all left and all the rest of it. And it's having that, you know, another great example is, have you ever seen when you're in traffic, heavy traffic at like five, six o'clock at night, and you see a scooter and he's sat three cars in front of you, and he's sat there like a car, and you think, why is he not going to the front of the traffic lights? He doesn't do it. No. A motorbike or another scooter will go straight past him and go straight to the front. He goes, oh yeah, I could do that. And then he goes <laughs> and follows Absolutely. and does it. And it's that simple mindset of just think a little bit more than just following the stream, following the routine. Sure. Well, so we've got pain and pleasure. If it's pleasurable, the subconscious will move towards you, otherwise it puts filters and blocks up. But, pain and pleasure, the subconscious likes regularity, familiarity, likes patterns. Yep. So, with your vision board, what wires together, fires, what fires together, wires together. You create neural networks. Get your vision board and use modern technology. Get your, pho your phone and photograph it. Save it as a screen save. Every time, and you're on the phone all day long, every night, yeah. do so. as soon as it rings, as soon as you flip it open, the screen save comes on, and it automatically will be registered by your subconscious. Do it last thing at night, first thing in the morning as well. Focus on your vision board, and first thing in the morning. The last thing at night, because the subconscious doesn't sleep, it's the last thing you think of, and it's the first thing that you focus on when you wake up in the morning. Yeah. Uh, so. He's thinking about it twice a day, and then when the phone goes, p pleasure. Yeah, so what I used to do on that one is, I used to actually go onto my notes on the iPhone, write down, I will be earning X amount of money, I'll be driving around in X amount uh, of car, uh, you know, I'll have this car, I'll have this lifestyle, I'll have this, and what I used to do is I used to sign it at the bottom, and then I'll put it as my background on my phone for that exact reason, so every yeah, time yeah. I saw it. Absolutely. So should we say that then is tip number four? Yep your biggest goals, write them down on your notes, sign it at the bottom on the notes feature on your iPhone and then put it as your background and do it monthly, do micro goals, so your first month's goals and then at the end of the month review how you've done and then do your second month's goals and so on and so forth. Just as a point on that, on your list when you do get your goal, cross it off and wipe it off, otherwise you might find that you lose the goal you've just got. Yeah as if you don't want it so when you've got it off take it off the list okay and put another one in its place yeah and just make sure you understand that you've achieved it well. absolutely okay so we're running out of time we've probably got a couple of minutes left now so uh we've obviously got the vision boards and all the rest of it uh, there's been a lot that's been taken away from this on a mindset point of view what would you say would be the biggest tip the final tip that you could give our users out there that are learning to trade, are traders at the moment, what would you say is the biggest tip that they could take away? I think obviously the visual boards and the notes is all very useful stuff. Sure. But what else could we, what else is the biggest thing? Uh, for me, I don't know whether we've covered, well, we, we talked about it, silence the mind. To sit down and be quiet. Yeah. In the Western world, if you're sat down doing nothing, you're considered lazy. Get up and do the washing up, go and tidy your bedroom up, go and take the rubbish out. In the Middle East and Far East, it's considered essential that you sit down, not necessarily meditate, but to be quiet. And with the mindset on the uh, silence, the mind technique, you, you start to chill down. You start to become a more calm and relaxed person. When you do that, you make better judgments. You make de better decisions. And so you, you make, and when you apply that to trading, you'll find that you make a better choice in trades. Okay, perfect. I think I would also like to add one thing, guys, and just remember that good things take time. You know, sure. that's probably one of the biggest things to add is yeah. that, 
you know, visualizing and all of the, all the other stuff that we've spoken about, putting down your goals, your micro goals, and working hard, you'll find that you will have a vision and that you will work hard towards a goal. However, you may not see anything coming back your way for a little while because you're still developing, your mindset is still getting ready for the whole vision board lining up and you're progressing. So just because you're not seeing something quickly doesn't mean it's not working. Give it time, okay? Give it time to start measuring your goals and see how much you progress on a month-to-month -month basis. Not a day-to-day -day basis, a month-to-month -month basis and just basically monitor that performance. But don't ever be put off by the fact that good things take time and we keep sure. seeing this time and time again in all the entrepreneurs interviews is that good things take time so the whole Rolls Royce thing or against a, a Seat you know one day and six months to build a Rolls Royce you know the whole thing of take time don't be greedy uh, it takes a while to build up the point of where you're earning good money so when we say take shortcuts we mean take shortcuts in the way that you think to approach something not exactly risk big now to hopefully get a quick win because you will lose in that sense. Sure. So always take time, be efficient with what you're doing. I think that's everything from us in regards to mindset. Is there any final notes you'd like to say? Focus on the technique, not the money. Yeah. You're not born into this world running a marathon. Like a child, you're going to stand up, you're going to fall down. You're going to stand up, you're going to fall down, but you're encouraged to walk. When you can walk, then you start making progress. You can run, hop, skip and jump. Then you can run your marathon. Treat trading exactly the same way. Start off slowly with the, with the uh, technique. Nail it on a demo account before you even go live until you feel really comfortable. And only then do you move on to your live account. Yeah, I think that's a, a great one. Especially if you look at that and go, I gave up on trading. We, none of us, ever, all of us that are alive, we never gave up on walking. No, <laughs> nobody. Nobody but you will find a reason why you can't trade. We are our own worst adversary because we know all the negatives. And nobody says you can't trade. You can. It will just take time. Some are faster than others. Some are slower. They all get there in the end. Yeah. Perfect, guys. Well, that is Entrepreneurs Talking to you. Episode 4 with Adrian Leach, the Samuel Co. Trader Mindset Coach. Guys, do not forget to thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and make sure in the comment box you give your love to Adrian and your Please. experience that you have had within the mindset side of trading and any questions that you may have. Take care, guys, and I'll hopefully I'll be a lot better for next week's episode. Speak soon.